Hello and welcome to all of you. You're watching Tech24. I'm Julia Seeger. It's been dubbed the monster by astronomers. For the first time ever, they were able to capture a black hole. It measures 3 million times the size of the Earth and is located some 500 million trillion kilometers away. A breakthrough made possible thanks to a woman. Katie Bauman is indeed the scientist behind the algorithm that allowed this scientific leap. And in Test24, we'll tell you more about the Stars for Disability project. Scientists are looking to spacesuits to find solutions for people suffering from mobility issues. Astronomers working on the Event Horizon Telescope project have managed to capture the unseeable. They recently produced the world's first picture of a black hole. It took nearly two years for 200 researchers and a network of eight radio telescopes spanning the globe to achieve this breakthrough, as Owen Barnell explains. Heading into space, 55 million light years away from Earth. At the heart of a neighboring galaxy, an image the world has waited on for over a hundred years. This is the nucleus of the galaxy M87, and this is the first ever image of a black hole. A halo of light around a ball of impenetrable darkness. It took eight radio observatories across four continents to capture this image. An international team controlling a type of virtual super telescope. This in Andalusia was one of them. Cutting edge technology like this allows researchers to widen our understanding of the universe. The fact we've been able to see it through surrounding radiation is a moment of astronomical magic. This piece of information, as we study black holes on the long term, is going to help us better understand the evolution of our galaxy, but also the universe itself. Black holes are mysterious entities. Recognizable by the ring of matter and energy in their orbit, it exerts such a gravitational pull that even light cannot escape. It was Albert Einstein who, in 1915, first identified black holes in his theory of general relativity. So there we have the fundamental equation of Einstein's gravitational theory in the absence of matter. This equation describes the physics behind black holes. This professor is a pioneer in black hole research. Thanks to his work, we are able to observe the coming together of two black holes and also understand their structure. So, what would happen if you fell into a black hole? For around a year, you would fall into the center of a black hole, into a space that appears to be infinite. And at the end of this stage, you would be ripped apart by tidal forces that would pull you in one way before crushing you in another. Time stops and space no longer exists. We do not know what is at their center or what happens if something falls in. No space or time. A new door into the unknown. Born when a star at least 10 times more massive than our sun runs out of fuel. Well, from one, this, let's welcome our in-house expert, Dan and Jay Cattlecar. Hello, Dan. Tell us more about the, the process of capturing and processing this black hole image. It actually involved a lot of other high-tech devices. Absolutely, Julia. Besides the array of telescopes, there were these cutting-edge technologies like uh, supercomputers, atomic clocks, enormous amount of data, and of course, a series of algorithms to interpret this data and turn it into an image. Now, each telescope generated one petabyte of data, that's one million gigabytes. Now this data was so huge that it couldn't be transferred electronically, so it had to be sent by using hard drives to two locations, one in Bonn and one in Massachusetts. Now atomic clocks were used to synchronize this recorded data, because as you mentioned earlier, there were eight different telescopes in divergent regions uh, spread all over the globe. So those have to be synchronized uh, using atomic clocks. Finally, there were the supercomputers, which are called correlators, 
in order to process this data. And again, as you mentioned in your introduction, there was this uh, MIT scientist, a uh, young MIT scientist, Katie Bowman, whose team uh, developed an algorithm, an image processing algorithm that enabled us to convert this data into an image. Now, other telescopes uh, are helping us to deepen our understanding of space around the world. Could you give us some examples? Well, yes. Uh, the Event Horizon Telescope is an example of uh, radio astronomy, which means it interprets uh, light waves in the radio uh, frequency range. But there are other four telescopes that that collect light in different ranges of the electromagnetic spectrum. Let's start perhaps with the most famous telescope, the Hubble Space Telescope. Right, that we was spoke launched, about it several yeah, times here on Tech 24. It was launched in 1990 and it orbits the Earth at an altitude of around 500 kilometers. And it has generated some spectacular images of the nebulas, of, as you can see here, of deep skies. And it also enhanced our understanding of uh, the dark matter. It, essentially discovered and characterized what dark matter is. That's one. The second telescope is the Spitzer uh, Space Telescope that works in the infrared uh, range. So here you can see in the infrared range is towards the red shift. So the, the, the light is always reddish. And you can see it also produced some spectacular images and it right. enhanced or rather it gave us a deeper understanding of the so-called Hubble constant, which is the rate of expansion of our uh, universe. And then there are other two examples, like the Chandra X-ray Laboratory, which works in the X-ray region, and the Compton Gamma Ray uh, Observatory, which works in the Gamma Ray region. Thank you, Dan. We're going to actually stay in space, this realm of exploration, but also of conquest. Israel has fallen short of becoming the fourth nation to complete the task of landing a spacecraft on the lunar surface. The moon landing failed at the last minute when the crash suffered an engine failure. Well, I'm now joined uh, by Ariel Gomez, the system engineer of Space IL. Hello, Ariel. And first of all, you know, we're very sorry to hear that the spacecraft uh, crashed, but at the same time, you are on the moon and this project has really revived in a way people's interest for the moon, hasn't it? Yes, hello. Uh, you're right. Uh, from one point of view, uh, it's crashed. But from the other point of view, uh, we are on the moon. We have the Israeli flag on the moon. And uh, what's it's also very important, we inspire uh, all the new, the young generation, Israeli young generation, and I think also abroad Israel, uh, we make inspiration. Now, inside the Bereshit Lunar Lander, uh, you've embarked a lunar library with 30 million pages of archives about human history and about our civilization. What was the goal here? Yeah, the so goal is also to leave some uh, part of the human data on the moon. We, we took with us three CD. Uh, with among uh, a lot of data, also uh, a lot of articles, and also a lot of pictures, uh, children pictures, family pictures, also my family pictures, to the moon. And uh, it's uh, also, it will re rest there, and a kind of a human heritage. So it's a first for your family that's now uh, on the moon, but it's also a world first because uh, this mission was made possible thanks to a private company and not by a space agency in particular. Yes, I think uh, yesterday uh, we opened a new age, it's a new fashion of a pri private mission uh, in the deep space uh, like we did. And uh, I think it will be a lot of a uh, new space mission uh, in order to reach the moon, to reach Mars, like uh, we have also like say, SpaceX. And I see it's like the first uh, flight, uh, EasyJet flight. It's a new low cost flight to the moon. And I think it's a very, very good news for the space, uh, all the space, the world space. Thank you so much for that. Ariel Gomez, the system engineer of Space IL. Now, Dan, Ariel just spoke about this, about this importance of leaving a human imprint on the moon. There's actually another project doing something similar. That's right. It's called Sanctuary Project, and it consists of engineers and scientists from different French research institutes. And what they're doing is they are sending 11 uh, sapphire disks which will have uh, different information engraved on it, right from uh, human genome, decoded human genomes, one of male and one of female. Then there will be information, whatever we have learned from 
biology to astrophysics, all this will be engra engraved on these disks and they will be left uh, on the lunar surface as a part of the mission which will be sent next year. And the idea is to leave behind evidence of human culture for future civilizations. Thank you, Dan. We're going to move on to Test 24. the set of Test 24 this week, we have a prototype of a suit, a kind that could actually have important implications both in space but also here on our planet, Dan. That's right. As you can see, it's a pretty simple suit. It has two sensors. One is a gyroscope which determines or tracks the movement of the person that's wearing the suit. As you can see here, the moment you tilt it, uh, the red light flashes and the moment you put it straight, the green light flashes. So it essentially is a measure of the posture that you are in. So if you are in a bad posture, the indication will be in the form of that red light. And if you are in a good posture, it will be the green light. Uh, there is another uh, sensor in the form of uh, piezoelectric crystals in these uh, thin wires. Now, mo the moment you turn your body, if you do it wrongly, again, you get a signal that something is wrong uh, with your movement. And so that is also an indication that you have to be in correct uh, positions. And now, now why is this useful? This, well, right? yeah, the use is that uh, this will be sent on missions to, for example, that's their plan, or the, uh, the concept is that it will be sent uh, to missions like the International Space Station, so that astronauts will wear it and all the data will be gathered, because space is a very uh, different uh, environment compared to being on Earth. It's harsher, uh, people tend to age more, uh, there are more physiological problems than being on Earth. So there will be a lot of data that will be gathered in a short period of time. And this data, in turn, will be used to, for example, develop re rehabilitation tools for people on Earth, uh, for example, in the development of exoskeletons that can be used for people with uh, mobility problems. Thank you, Dan. That brings us to the end of this week's edition. But you can watch it again on our website, france24.com. See you next time.